Hello and welcome to Grocket TV GMAT Lesson 8. We'll be joined by Stacy Blackman in about an hour to take us through our fourth MBA admissions lesson in the course. Thanks a lot for joining us. Let us know if you can see and hear us all right, and we're going to get started in just a few seconds. Alright, so today we are going to jump into our second critical reasoning class. We're going to review a little bit what we learned in our first critical reasoning class and tackle three new question types. But before we do that, as usual, we're going to do a little review on what we did last week. Just to remind you, my name is Farb Nivy. I'm the founder of Grocket and the instructor for your GMAT portion of this course. You can follow me on Twitter at, at @farboot. It's a good way to fire off any questions that you have to me and you can also contact us at support at grocket.com if you have any questions about the course. Just to remind you how this course works, it's free to watch all of our sessions live. If you want to download or restream any of the sessions, you can buy a Grocket TV membership for $99. That's separate from the Grocket standard membership that gives you access to the Grocket application. This is a new project for us, so if you've gotten confused at all by that, sorry about that, but we're uh, going to bundle these two together. It seems like a lot of folks want to purchase both the course and the uh, application. So we'll get on that, and of course, if you have any questions, just email us at support. Let's do a little reading comprehension review. Let's talk about how we read when we're reading reading comprehension passages. We want to notice opinions. We want to notice extreme language. We want to read for the author's angle, the structure of the passage, and the overall picture. We are not trying to remember everything that we read and answer our questions from our memory. If you try and answer your questions from your memory, you're violating our GMAT robot rule about using our scratch pad to remember and using our brains to think. So we'll see that in, in action in a moment here when we review a passage. The question types we've reviewed so far are main idea, line reference questions or explicitly stated questions, infer or imply questions, and questions that have to do with the logical structure and we'll have another reading comprehension class later on in the course. Remember when we're answering reading comprehension questions, we want to ID the question type. We want to work the answer choices and we want to check with the passage and we're going to go back and forth from the passage, from the question to the passage, back to the question, to the answer choices and checking the answer, the question again if we're not sure. And we'll show you that off in a moment here. Let's actually, before we jump into critical reasoning, let's take a look at some reading comprehension questions. So I'm taking the GMAT, I see this question and I read the question before I read the passage so that I can only do the amount of work I need to to answer this question. This question says the passage's first sentence implies that endemic goiters and cretinism are primarily caused by. So I don't need to read the whole passage yet. I don't even need to read the first and last sentences of the paragraphs. What I do need to do is answer this question. So let's go ahead and just read the first five lines of the passage so that we can answer this question. Go ahead and do that. Okay, great. So one thing that the GMAT does, and they do it on purpose, is a lot of times they don't present questions to us as questions. Questions usually involve the words who, what, where, when, why, and how. We've all learned this. But you notice that most GMAT questions don't contain those words. Here they say the passage's first sentence implies that endemic goiters and cretinism are cr primarily caused by, and they want us to sort of finish that thought. I like to turn the question into a question. And the question here is, what causes endemic goiters and cretinism? And if we come over here and we read, before it was understood that iodine is a trace element necessary for proper thyroid function, the reasons for endemic goiters and cretinism were not understood. So what causes, see I'm going back to the question, what causes endemic goiters and cretinism? A lack of iodine, or iodine deficiency. So I've already answered, uh, 
gotten enough information to answer this question, I'm going to go ahead and pick A and confirm my answer. And we can see that we're correct. So the process here is the same as always. We read the question first. We understood it. If it's helpful for you, it's helpful for me to actually turn it into a question. What causes? Went over here. The question led me to the area that I needed to read. I read just what I needed to read. I found the answer. I picked my answer and I'm ready to move on. If there are more questions, of course, that come along with this passage on the GMAT, that's okay. I'll handle those as they come. If there's a main idea question next, I'll read more of the passage and go through the other processes that I've learned. But I just want to do the, uh, the least amount of work I need to to answer the questions correctly. Let's continue to the next question. Great, go ahead and read this question to yourself real quickly and we'll work it together. Just read the question. Again, we have a question that is pointing to a specific part of the passage. I'm going to turn this into a question because, again, they didn't present it to us with any of the who, what, where, when, why, how words. And I think what they're asking here is why, why does the author cite this? Why does the author cite this? The, they said lines 20 through through 24. Let's go ahead and start reading up here. I'll read from here till about here. Great, I'm going to go back to the question. So why did the author mention these? Why did the author mention these? Let's take a look. To explain how iodine is important to numerous systems. So they're talking about iodine, which is something that the passage talked about. And they even talked a little bit about it here. But that's not what they're talking about in this part. In fact, they're talking about something different. So this answer choice I don't think is correct. B, categorize details that enhance the passage's academic tone. So categorizing details is pretty heavy-handed for what's going on here. He lists some things, but I don't see a categorization of details. That's a bit much and it's not supported by the passage. Whereas demonstrate how difficult it would be to diagnose hyperthyroidism. Demonstrate seems like an okay word. That's not heavy-handed. How difficult it is. Let's see if I can support that. What language in this area helps us support this answer choice, if there is any? If we read a little bit more, we see this di word difficult right here. It makes it difficult to diagnose. Let's hold on to that. D, offer a list of systems that can be affected by iodine deficiency. The problem here is, again, they're sort of mixing things up. We talked about iodine deficiency in the passage, but it's not in reference to this discussion here around hyperthyroidism. Categorize the systems that are affected by an inadequate diet. I don't recall diet being mentioned here at all, so I can get rid of that. So demonstrating seems like an appropriate word. How difficult it would be to diagnose hyperthyroidism, because so many systems are affected uh, it, to be another disease which makes it difficult to diagnose. I can point to it, it's an explicitly stated question, so we should be able to answer this question correctly. Let's try C. Are we doing okay? All right. Awesome. Nice work team. We got that one correct. So sticking to our process and practice on reading comprehension will help us answer the questions quickly and accurately without spending any more time than we need to. Let's go ahead and jump into today's portion, uh, the new portion of today's lesson and talk a little bit about critical reasoning. Uh, and let's just review a little bit about what we learned in our first critical reasoning class. Our goals on any critical reasoning question are first to understand the question type, second to analyze and synthesize the paragraph, and then work with the answers. Let's remember that often the paragraphs contain bad reasoning, they make wild conclusions, 
and either they have a conclusion, premise and assumption or they'll read more like a story or a list of things and we'll see a lot of, we'll see a lot of this type today. In our first class on critical reasoning we concentrated primarily on the conclusion, premise and assumption type questions uh, and today we're going to see a lot of questions that just read like a story. Remember that there are specific types of questions. They're not random, they're not new each time the GMAT comes out. There are specific question types. We're going to learn to identify them. We're going to be GMAT robots about them and they're not always well, they're not always worded well. Um, a lot of times they're bad questions. They're not good. And remember that the specific language in the question will lead us to what type of question that it is. The answer choices, remember we're going to test the answers out. We have tests to apply to each of the answers to help us uh, assess them. If you remember assumption questions, for example, we would ask, we would test them by negating the answer choice and expecting the argument to fall apart. And we'll see that on the new types of questions that we learn today. We want to make sure that we're asking the right question. We don't just ask ourselves, is this the right answer? That's not useful for your brain. We want to give our brain a real specific question to answer so it can give us an answer one way or the other. And always remember, it's a good thing it's not the LSAT because the LSAT has got some nasty critical reasoning questions. So, just to review conclusion, assumption and premise, I'm actually going to move through this slide a little bit more quickly. We're not going to see too many of these question types, but remember conclusions and premises are always stated and true. Assumptions are always unstated. They also must be true for the argument to make sense. The conclusions often read like TV news stories that make those wild accusations about how something in your home is horrible for your whole family. The assumption often links the premise and the conclusion with words. And it would be a premise essentially if it was stated. Today we're going to concentrate a lot on lo language versus logic. Don't forget words like can and could and sometimes, must, always, never, will. These are important words. The GMAT does not throw words around lightly when these words are contained in answers, when these words are contained in the pa passage. They are important. Logic on the other hand are things like conditional statements, contrapositives, more examples of language use are word uh, number words like many, most, or some. Who knows how many many is? Who knows how many some is? Most, however, is more than 50%. So we can't just interchange these words however we want. They all have specific meanings that we have to be specific about. Another type of logic that could exist on the GMAT are things like the transitive property. If A equals B and B equals C, then A equals C. Venn diagrams are often parts of uh, ways that we can organize the logic around a critical reasoning question. And this is one of my favorites actually. The GMAT loves throwing around words like evidence and example and counterexamples. And more often than not, there aren't any examples, counterexamples given in the paragraph. If those answers exist in the answer choices and they don't exist in the paragraph, I can eliminate that whole answer, even if the other nine out of the ten words are great. If it's talking about an example, but there isn't one, that answer is no good. So language first and then logic. So when we started, we worked on assumption and weaken and strengthen. We did this in our critical reasoning one class. Today we're going to take a look at inference, evaluation of a plan, and complete the passage. In our last class, we'll look at, in our last critical reasoning class, we'll look at these three question types. Great. So if we remember, just a quick review, assumption questions, weaken questions, strengthen questions, these are the tests that we, these are the, the tests that we apply to these. Today we're going to work these three types of questions on inference questions. We're asking ourselves, must this be true based on what was stated? An inference is a paraphrasing. It's saying the same thing with different words and we need to be able to point to the answer. Just like in reading comprehension, when we said on an inference question we need to be able to point to the answer, we need to be able to do the same thing here. In evaluation of a plan question, they're either asking us to evaluate a plan, <coughs> excuse me, or propose a plan. 